These are 12 tips for using Copilot within OneNote, taking you from beginner to pro, so let's nerd out. To use these features, you will either need a 365 Copilot or a Copilot Pro license, and I have done another video on how you can access Copilot, and I'll include that in the description below. At Amy's Animal Shop, we are launching our winter apparel line, and it would be really nice to add an executive summary to this draft business plan. So if we click anywhere on this page, then we will see a little Copilot icon appear. And if we select that, then we get some options. Additionally, if you right click anywhere on the screen and go Copilot, then we have a similar experience. So if we select summarize page, then we can see here that it is pulling it together. And just note that for this feature to work, you need to have at least 30 words for Copilot to have something to work with. And here is our summary. At the bottom, we can either keep it or discard it. So let's keep it and we will see that it has automatically been added to the top of our page. Next, we are going to highlight just the text beneath this market analysis section. We will right click and then go Copilot and we have those same tools available, but this time we have only targeted a specific section of our OneNote page. So this time let's go rewrite this and we will see that Copilot is now going to rewrite this text to make it flow better. And I find that this is particularly helpful if you have a bunch of bullet points or have just brainstormed some text and you want to make it flow better. Whereas the summarize feature provides a direct summary of the contents of your page. Similarly, we have the option to discard or keep it. And what I really like here is that it has now just added the rewrite to the top, but it has kept your original text below so that now you can reference both of them and adjust everything as you need. This right click menu is also available. If we go to a section, we will see it appear there. Or if we right click on a page this time, let's go create a task list. And we can see that Copilot is now extracting a to do list from the contents of this page, and I will go and keep it. So these are now action items that Copilot has derived, and now we can work through them as a checklist. I find this one is also very helpful if you're working with transcribed meeting notes. Now that we have covered the essentials of the right-click menu, let's go to the Home tab on the ribbon, and then head on over to Copilot. So this opens up the Copilot chat window where we can now dive into some more advanced features and there are some predefined prompts here to get you started. Let's start off with this to-do list. It is an impressive feature, but I find that this one is quite long, so it's a bit difficult to navigate. So in this chat window here, we can ask Copilot to extract a to-do list from this page and to organize it into sections. And I just want to note that I have specifically defined the sections that I want it to break it down into. You could keep it vague and just say to break it down into sections, but providing Copilot with that additional information, then you are more likely to get the response that you are looking for. So we can see here that Copilot has now given us a to-do list based on each of those sections. So if we just go and copy this, then we can paste it into our page. And just remember that when you do use that copy feature, it does copy over an intro and an outro. So we will just remove those. Now that that's in there, we need to make it as a checklist layout. So from the home tab on the ribbon under tags, you can simply go to do, or there's that shortcut key, which is control one, as we all love a good shortcut. So this is coming along, but these numbers with the checklist look a little bit funny. So if we just go up to the numbered list formatting here, we can select it once and then just select it one more time and we will see that that has been removed. So here we can see that we have a nice checklist that has been organized into sections, which makes it easier to navigate. However, I find that these checklists are great, but really ideal for personal use. So if you're going to be collaborating with a team, then you are going to want to assign tasks to team members 
And ideally, they want to be able to see those within Planner or To Do. So in order to do that, you would need to go up to Insert, go Loop Component, and then go Task List. And this is going to insert a task list where you can assign tasks as well as team members and a due date. And all of those tasks are going to show up in their planner or to do. I have done a whole other video on using task lists, and I will link that in the description below. Moving along, one of the best things about working with Copilot is getting started on a blank page and overcoming that writer's block. And one thing that I really like to use is this little microphone icon. So let's draft a business plan for our dog apparel winter line to present to our management team. Use a professional tone. So that is a nice way to give yourself a little break from the keyboard. And now we can send. So while this is generating, I just wanted to touch on four key ingredients to effective prompts. And the first one is goal, which is what you are looking for. The second one is context, which is why you need it. The third one is expectation, which is who are you preparing this for or any specific layout that you are looking for. And the final one is source, which is the information that it should be referencing when it's gathering this information. So we can go over here and I can see at the bottom that there are no references. I'll point those out a little bit later. So this tells me that Copilot is working off of its general knowledge, and we are going to dive into some other reference sources that Copilot works on a little bit later in this tutorial. So if we scroll on up here, then we can see that Copilot has drafted us a business plan, and this is certainly better than anything that I could have written within the one minute that it took to generate. So let's take this, we will copy it, paste it, and we will use this as a starting point. So now that we have that in there, we can see that there are some additional suggested prompts at the bottom here, which is a great way to keep the conversation going. Or you can even use the refresh feature to refresh some additional suggested prompts. But in our case, I want to reference a document that we already have for our products. So I'm just going to press forward slash and then start to type the name of that document. And we can see here that it has now narrowed down the search and it is this document right here. So now I'm asking Copilot to summarize our products in a bullet list. And the bullet list is an example of that expectation. So that format when we are prompting Copilot, if you are interested in learning more about how to prompt Copilot or the ingredients that create an effective prompt, then I will include some additional videos in the description. So we can see that Copilot has now drafted those products in a bullet list, but I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to check the responses for accuracy. And in this case, I know that there are three products in that file and it has only given me two. So now I'm going to let Copilot know that it's missed one. I'm going to ask it to rewrite and include the dog booties. And I'm also going to redirect it back to that file. I find that this will just help you get the best response. So now I will click send and we will watch it look for those dog booties. And now it's going to regenerate that response. And we can see that those are now in there. So this is an example of how we need to definitely check for accuracy when working with Copilot, but then how you can also just use normal language to converse with it and ask it if it's missed something or let it know that it missed something and then redirect them to exactly what you're looking for and how it can correct that. Next, I want to demonstrate how we can update the format. So even though we specifically mentioned bullet points, if we want to move this into a table format, we can simply say tabulate. And now Copilot is going to take that last response and it is going to put it into a nice and easy to read table format for us. So we can now copy this and then now we will paste it under this product offerings area. Next, I want to add a section about some challenges for this winter apparel line that Mike and I have discussed in an email earlier this week. So we will add our prompt forward slash 
If you know that you are specifically only wanting to mention a file, then we can select files. Once again, you can start to type it and help narrow down that search. We can also specifically mention just people, which in this case, I am going to go with Mike, but we'll come back to that. If there is a specific meeting that you want to mention, I don't have anything here, but you will likely see something and you could specifically mention one meeting. And then if we select the ellipses here, we can even search for emails. So this dog apparel winter challenges email is actually the thread that I do want to reference, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go with people and I'm going to enter Mike. So this one, I'm keeping a broader search. And I also wanted to highlight that I have specifically mentioned this week. And this demonstrates that Copilot does have an idea about timeframes. So we can see that Copilot has generated the response. And at the bottom here, we have one reference. So if we select the carrot and then the carrot again, we are going to see that this is that dog winter apparel challenges. Outlook is the source. So that is that specific email that I just pointed out to you, which is a great reference for me that Copilot has gathered all of the information from here, but we can copy this and now I'm going to paste it under the product challenges section. And I just wanted to note that there is a teeny tiny delay in Copilot accessing information such as email threads or documents. I haven't noticed anything as big as a day, but just keep that in mind that if you are trying to reference a new document, then there is going to be a really small delay in Copilot getting access to that information. So our business plan is coming together but there isn't anything about market trends. So let's ask Copilot to summarize market trends for the dog apparel line. And this is an example where I've kept the search broad and it is combing through our company documents, including emails and all sorts of good stuff. So let's now take a look at some of these references. So if we scroll on up, and we can see that Copilot has broken down this output into two components. The first one is from your company. And if we hover over this little number here, then we'll see that it is a SWOT analysis Word document from our company files. And if we scroll on down, then we have from the web. And again, if we hover over these numbers, then we can select these references and open up the websites for credibility as well as accuracy in the information that Copilot has referenced. So going back to our prompt, what you could do depending on your circumstances is say, summarize the market trends for the dog apparel line from your company or from the web. And then you are going to be providing Copilot with some direction on the sources which is one of those key components when we are prompting Copilot. Before we move on, I want to show you how we can start a fresh chat with Copilot. So when you are chatting with Copilot, it's also referencing your history that you have in the chat thread right here. So if you find yourself in a situation where Copilot is not giving you the response that you want, then it could just be that you have covered a lot of topics in one chat thread and it is getting a little bit confused. And when that happens, what I suggest is selecting this switch co-pilots button and you can select this create new conversation, which gives you a fresh and clean slate to start a new conversation with co-pilot. And if we go back to that switch co-pilots button at the bottom here, you will see chat history. So this is going to pull up all of your previous conversations so that you can go back to an existing conversation to continue on with that information. And if you ever want to clear out your chat history or delete a specific conversation, then you can just click this little trash icon or go down to the bottom here, which is delete all of your co-pilot history. Now that our business plan is ready for the winter apparel line, we need to draft an email to our management team, which we can easily do with Copilot. So here I'm going to specify 
that is going to include a link to this OneNote page, as well as introduce the product line and highlight some of those product challenges. So we can just see how quickly Copilot gathered this information and it has drafted our email for us in seconds. This prompt here that we have just used to draft an email is also incredibly helpful if you have transcribed meeting notes. And one thing that I really like is that if you have added some notes with a stylus, hopefully it looks better than mine, then Copilot is able to reference both the transcription as well as handwritten notes. Copilot is an incredibly helpful tool. Sometimes you don't know what to ask it. If we go down to this little view prompts button at the bottom, then we have some additional options. So you can go create, understand, edit, or ask. And if you expand any of these options, then you will see a long list of prompts that you can ask Copilot. And if you are still not sure, then you can go view more prompts and use the filters at the top to narrow down your prompt search. And one thing that I definitely recommend is bookmarking or saving your favorite prompts so that they can easily be accessed under the saved prompts filter at the top. For more tips on using 365 Copilot, you can check out my playlist linked here or this suggested video from YouTube.